Web designer, here are four Wix Studio features you gotta know. Evangelist Tisha Holston, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? We hear you, ma'am. Oh, I'm asking you if you could hear me, but I forget when I have this mic attached, I can't hear anyone, but I can see your comments. So go ahead and make some comments. Y'all know how I like it. Make put some comments in the uh, uh, in the chat. Give me some amens. Uh, let me know that you're there. Are we 
going to participate in the chat. Amen. We're going to do calls and responses in the chat. Thank you, Sister Felicia. Father God, we just thank you today for this service. We thank you for this time and this word that you have given and that you will give to us. God, I just ask that you would word my mouth. Um, let the meditation that has been in my heart and that the words that come out of my mouth, let them be acceptable unto you. God, I ask that you would feed your sheep. Feed your people on today. And the thing that I don't have prepared, God, I lo loose myself unto you that you would be able to take over my mouth, word it, and let, let me speak it to the people on today. God, I thank you because you've been gracious to us. I thank you because you've been good to us. I thank you because you've kept us through the storms, through the trials, through the situations that we face. You are the one that is keeping us. And for that, that we say thank you. God, we thank you for keeping us. We thank you for leading us. We thank you for guiding us. We thank you for even our loved ones, even the ones that's not thinking about you, but because we're they're surrounded by us or we're, we're they're in our presence that you keep them also until the day that they can hear you and see you and feel you and know you. God, we are just standing in the place of gratitude on today because you are good to us. And so we thank you, Lord. Go before us. I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone who's listening now and those that will listen later. God, I just ask that you would uh, saturate the atmosphere in every person's home and let them not hear what Tisha is saying, but let them hear what the Holy Spirit is saying unto them. And so I thank you for that, God. I thank you for being a vessel. Help me to be even more willing and more willing each and every day to do what it is that you've called me to do. God, I thank you for your servants, God, who do what you call them to do. And I thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Now, y'all know I got two, 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 just so you know, I got two mic uh, monitors. So if I look over here, it's because I'm looking at a different monitor. Amen. Because I don't, sometimes, you know, we be looking at Mac and we're like, well, what was she doing? I'm looking at the other monitor. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so thank you all for being here today. Amen. The song said there's a storm out over the ocean and it's moving this away. And if your soul is not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Do you have any storms going on in your life right now? Do you know anybody that's in a storm? But I want to share with you a story of someone in the Bible who went through some storms. Would you turn with me to, or, or, or Google it, <laughs> bring it up on your phone, Acts chapter 28, Acts chapter 28. And we're going to be reading from verses three all the way down to six. And um, give me a shout out in the chat when you got it. Give me a shout out in the chat when you got it. Say, I got it, Sister Tisha. I got it. Acts chapter 28, 3. I got it. I got it. I got it. Anybody got it yet? Come on, y'all can Google faster than that. <laughs> Am I on a delay? Is this thing on? I got a mic right here. Is this thing on? Acts chapter 28, verses three through six. I don't see nobody in the chat. What's up? I got a joyful spirit this morning, y'all. I got a joyful spirit this morning because I believe the word has sent me with a word of encouragement. And, it, and if it don't encourage you, just know that he used it to encourage me in the preparation. Amen. Somebody said, I got it. Amen. Two people, thank you, said, I got it. And it reads, and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, 
there came a viper out of the heat and fastened it on his hand. And they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom throw he had, who thought he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And, and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. Amen. God, I bless the word this morning. This journey, I know many of you are familiar with this scripture. And this journey, though, it starts out, or where I'm going to start it out in, is in Acts 27. And this he that the scripture is talking about is Paul. And he, Paul, is on a ship with some other people. And they're sailing to a place called Rome. Paul is a prisoner. And... The sailing, though, had become dangerous. And you can read Acts, Acts 27 in your spare time there uh, or in your Bible readings, but the sailing had become dangerous. And Paul let these people know. In Acts chapter 27, verse 10, he says that he perceived that the voyage would hurt and damage not only the ship, but that people were going to lose their lives. Y'all, spiritual protection uh, uh, or perception is to understand or to know something through the power of the spirit. But you cannot perceive a thing through the power of the spirit if you do not have the power of the spirit. You need the power of of the Holy Ghost. That's not my lesson. So I'm going to try not to get too excited because I love talking about the Holy Spirit. But people these days, they don't want you, you perceiving anything back. They only want you perceiving the good stuff. They only want you perceiving what they want to here. They don't want you to give them warnings. They don't want you to give them directions. Don't you tell me what to do. Who do you think you are? Paul, you are a prisoner. And so they didn't believe Paul. They didn't believe Paul. They continued in the way that they were going. Church, don't be surprised when God gives you a word for for somebody, a word for a people, a word for a person, and they don't take it to heart. They don't hear it. They don't listen. All of that. They do the opposite of what God has given you. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised even when their disobedience affects you. But take heart that God is no longer just on the ship but he is now in you and you are going to make it. I just, I want you to grab your phone, grab a mirror, look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am going to make it. I'm going to make it. God is in me and I'm going to make it. I don't care what the devil does. I am going to to make it. And so they continued in the direction that they were going, despite the warnings, despite the signs, despite we got a lot of things going on and people are moving and doing despite. And for a little while, a little while, everything appeared to be okay. But how many of you know that when God gives the man or the woman of God a word, it is what it is, whether you believe it or not. That thing is going to come to pass. Now, I remember it's time when 
I was um, going to this ministry, right? On the other days off, it only met once a month. And I had let mom know um, that I was going there. And um, she never said anything. She always was like, I'm, I'm pray about that, right? And, you know, she let me go for a little while and stuff. And then one day after Bible study, um, we were kind of like the only ones I think that were left. Maybe there might have been another car. And I'm coming out of the uh, Tuckwilla Community Center where we were. And mom stops. She, she's in the car. She's about to drive off. And it was like, she sees me. And she says, she got this, oh, in her spirit. Like, I just remember, like the Lord just said, you got something to tell her. And she says, Sister Colston, you know that ministry that you told me about? She said, don't go back there. She said, don't go back there. She said, I don't know why. And I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But the Lord said, don't go back there. And um, anybody ever have mom say this to you? I'm serious as death. So I said, oh. Because I don't think she's ever said that to me before. I'm serious as death. Now, I, I I I felt that in my spirit. You better listen this time. See, I was always one of those one of those children. I'm one of them hard headed children. You know, I was one of them hard headed children. I do my own thing, do my own way, say what I want to say, do what I want to do. And I was always getting a whooping, always in trouble. I was one of them. Okay, <laughs> with my 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 dad or my mom. You know, they, the, this is what I know. A hard head leaves a soft behind. That's what my dad would quote before he would give me a whooping. And he hated giving whoopings, but I left him no other choice a lot of times. And he said, a hard head leaves a soft behind. And I said, well, this time, Tisha, maybe you ought to listen because mom said, look, ain't no sense in having this needless pain. You know, mom would tell us that, right? No needless pain. And so I listened and I didn't go back. And sometime later, I felt the unction to go to this ministry. I don't know why. I, I battled with it. They only met once a month. And I battled with it for a little while because I'm like, Lord, is this you or is this my flesh? Right. You know. And so anyway, I go and I, I, I went and the man of God that was the prophet in this house, he was standing up in the pulpit and he says, he said, that they had some witches in the church. They had some, witch, some witches in the church. And I can't remember all that he said. All I remember is that he said that they had some witches in the church that they had to put out of the church. And I said, that is why the Holy Ghost said to mom, don't go back there. Because you don't know what danger it lies in wait, right? But the Holy Spirit does. You need to tap yourself and say, you need to have the Holy Ghost. And I said, I said to myself, oh, wow. I'm sure, so, I'm so glad this time I listened. And I'm thinking, you know, the threat is over. Okay, the threat is over. They done put the, de they done put the devils out, right? And I can go back to this church. I can start going back to this ministry. It wasn't a church, it was a ministry. And God said, oh, no, you not. Because I had this dream between that time I went and the next time I had this dream. Now I'm a dreamer. So I had this dream and in the dream, I had gone to this church <laughs> and they weren't there. I looked all over. I was like, maybe I got the room, the room, the, the, maybe they changed. They were not there. I stopped somebody and I asked them about the church or the ministry that was there. They didn't know anything about what I was talking about. And these people were not there and I didn't have a number. I didn't even remember the name of the people. Okay. And all I know is that I had this dream. Do you know what happened, saints? I went <laughs> because I told y'all I'm hard at it. And I went and can I tell you that exactly, exactly the, the steps that happened in that dream was exactly what happened. I went there and they were not there. 
I asked somebody if they had seen them. It was exactly what played out in the dream. Church, you have to have the Holy Spirit, not only in you, but also in the people that you associate, in your friends, in the church leaders. You got to be a part of a church that has the Holy Spirit operating. You need a people that can get a word from the Lord. You need to be surrounded by people who can sit in their prayer time and, and, and God bring you to their spirit and they be able to give a word from the, the Lord. You need to be around a people. You need to be a people who can get a word from the Lord. Back to the story. So, Paul perceives that this trip, it's not going to be good, right? And they're not listening. And I'm on the ship. I got a reassurance that everything is going to be fine. And a huge storm, it comes. Just like Paul said, the, the huge storm comes. And the, the, strong, the, the, the storm is so strong that everybody on the ship is scared. They, they scared they ain't going to live. They're not going to make it out of this thing. And I'm sure some of them probably thought back to what Paul had said, right? And they started throwing stuff overboard and they, want, they needed to do things to make the ship lighter because they were trying to save themselves. Listen, you can get yourself in such a situation that no matter what you do, you cannot save yourself. You need the Lord to save you. These folks could not save themselves from that storm. They needed a word from the Lord. The word of the Lord was sitting over them to perform what he said that it was going to perform. Without that word of the Lord, all of them would have perished in that storm. Paul had a word from the Lord. Do you have a word over you? See, in the days ahead, you're not going to just need this biblical knowledge. Not just biblical knowledge. You are going to need the word from the Lord. You're going to need to truly be saved. The earth is testifying what the Bible has foretold and that the saints have been preaching that we are living in the last days and time is rearing up, time is getting worse. And these are the things that must happen because Jesus is coming. A few days ago, there was a 4.8 earthquake that shook the East Coast that they had not had an earthquake of that magnitude in decades. Now, I grew up in New York. We had a little earthquake, I remember, one time, but it was not a 4.8. That's a big thing for the East Coast. The earth is testifying. Taiwan had the strongest earthquake in 25 years, hit a few days ago, 7.4. The earth is testifying. Listen, here's something you may not know. Since November, 2023, uh, about 57 species of fish in Florida have this weird behavior. They just been spinning. They spin and then they die. I saw that they had, they were showing the fish and the fish just spun, 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 spun. Where do fish do that at? These fish are spinning and they are dying and they don't know why. The earth is testifying. And these folks, they cannot save themselves. You cannot save yourself. You need the Lord. You need to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. You need the Holy Ghost. 
active in your life. Because scripture says in Isaiah 30 and 20, when it says, and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, he is going to give you direction. How many of you know that you need direction in these days? You need the Holy Spirit. Back to the text. So Paul tells everyone not to worry. He said, don't worry about it. Because even though you didn't listen to me, Jesus speaks a better word. The blood of Jesus speaks a better word. I got a word from the Lord. And the angel had told Paul that they would all be safe and that the ship, the ship was going to crash. Let's look at it. Acts chapter 27 and 22 through 26. It says, and now I urge you to take heart for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night, an angel of of God to whom I belong. Do you belong to God and whom I serve? Are you serving the Lord? And it said, he says in 24 saying, uh, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those things, all those, I'm sorry, all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God. Anybody believe God that it's going to be just as it was told to me. However, we must run aground on a certain I said, listen, the angel of the Lord said, I got a place to be. I have a place of purpose. And because y'all are with me, by virtue of association, you ain't gonna die. I ain't gonna die. You know that by virtue of association with you, saints of God, that some people will make it through the storms of their lives until they can get to the place where they can see God, where they can see the power of God working in their lives for themselves because they are in association with you who have a, who God has a plan and a purpose over their life. Somebody said, God will save you. God will save you and he will save the people with you. <laughs> Don't you love him? Don't you love him? Listen, recently, now y'all know, we I asked for a prayer for my son all the time. And uh, recently, he had been gone a few days. Is that Apostle Early on there? Hey, Apostle. Um, recently, he had been gone a few days. He packed up his stuff in his little backpack and he was gone. He had been gone a few days. Now, I had made it in my mind that I was not going to be, you know, worried, you know, but I'm still mother. Okay. And so I, 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 I used to really, really worry and pray, right? What they say, if you're going to worry, don't pray. And if you're going to pray, don't worry. <laughs> So I said, Lord, help me to pray and not worry. Let me, I'm just going to give him to you. I'm going to speak that I'm giving him to you until I really give him to you. And I don't, I don't worry, but I take it to the Lord in prayer. Anyway, I think the mothers in the church can understand where I'm coming from. And the fathers in the church can understand where I'm coming from. And so he wasn't answering any of my texts. As a matter of fact, it seemed like, you know, the phone lets you know it's being delivered. It wasn't showing me nothing. And so then uh, I started to be concerned. It wasn't like normal where he just, in, in, you know, was ignoring my calls and my texts. They were not being delivered to his phone. And so, so, so I started to get concerned. I ain't gonna lie. I started worrying a little bit. I'm, I'm really petitioning the Lord. Lord, show me something. Give me a sign, you know, um, and my mom and I was just running around. She was here for about a month. And she, we were just running around together. And um, on this particular day, we were we were coming out of Walmart. And um, lo and behold, saints, I see him. And he is standing in a very awkward place. 
but he his he he was standing on a corner and he was standing there in like this holding pattern like a zombie so to speak and he's this he's he's waiting there like he's waiting on someone like he's waiting at the bus stop and I, I wish I could show you a picture because it was an awkward spot and but it was the only spot that you know with talking and all that and driving that I would have seen him and I saw him as I approached and I was like, is that, is that? and sure enough, as I got closer, it was him and he hops in the car. And later on, I say to him, I asked him, I said, I said, what were you, what were you doing? Like, why were you just standing there? And he said, I don't know. It was just like something was holding me there. Come on, somebody. Something was holding me there and I couldn't move. And that's exactly how he looked, saints. He looked like something was holding him there and he couldn't move. Come on, somebody. God will keep those who are on the ship with you until they can come to themselves. And so now we pick up back in, in into the text. And in Acts chapter 28, they're now on this island, Malta. And the people there are nice to them. Now, why is that important? Because the scripture says that they're barbarians. They're barbarians, but they're nice to them. And I want you to know that when you are moving in the purpose and the plans of God, the favor of the Lord is with you and it is on you. It goes before you. It surrounds you and unusual things happen. You will have favor where people where you might not have thought you would have favor at. Or with people you what might not have thought you would have favor with. These were barbarians but they have favor. And one day, you know, Paul is out there because remember now the ship is towed up, right? They, they on this island. And Paul's gathering sticks to make a fire and the snake bites him. But he doesn't get sick. And he doesn't get hurt from this snake bite. And that surprises everyone because even the barbarians, they was like, he must be a murderer. Because he thought he was a murderer and he thought he got away. He got it on the island. But the, but no, this snake then came up out the heat of this fire, uh, out the heat, was drawn to this heat, comes out of this heat, and he got bit. But at the end of the day, they were like, he must be a god. <laughs> I want to talk about the snake for just a few minutes. Did you know that vipers and pythons and boa constrictors, that they have holes on their faces called pit organs, which, which contains or that has a membrane that can detect the, 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 the infrared radi radiation from warm bodies? And so at night, the pit organs allow the snakes to see an image of their predator or their prey. And just like an infrared camera does, it gives them this uh, 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 extra sense. In other words, they have heat sensing capabilities. And these types of snakes only go after, the, after prey that are generating heat. I had just gotten, we had just gotten back from my grandfather's grave and my mom was, was at the car. We had gone in the house. My mom's at the car and she comes in the house and she says, oh, there was this big worm. <laughs> she said, there was this, I thought it was a stick and I started to step on it, but something said, don't step on the stick. And she said, and she said, and it moved. It lifted up his head and it moved. And I said, what was she saying? You know, we're just, we're just talking. And then later on, I came back and I said, it just hit me. I said, that wasn't no snake, mom. I said that, I mean, no, yeah, that wasn't no worm, mom. I said, that was a snake. <laughs> it was a snake. I said, ain't no worms in the middle of the parking lot. 
that was a snake and it reared up his head. And it's a good thing something said to you, don't step on that. I said, because, you know, these out, we out here in North Carolina and the key snake out here is, um, oh, what's, what's that snake, snake called? It, it, it's, it's the, it's a North Carolina snake and it's venomous. Okay. It's venomous. So you don't want that snake to bite you. All right. So it wasn't a snake. It was, it wasn't a worm. It was a snake. And I want you to know that what is natural, what is true in the natural is also true in the spiritual. And if you are on fire for God, if you are generating spiritual heat, it's going to cause spiritual snakes to come after you. And second Timothy, Paul says that, 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 that all that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Listen, if you're not dealing with any snakes, it could be because there's no fire in your life. You're not generating any heat. When you get on fire for God, the snakes are going to come looking for you. <laughs> but watch this, but watch this, but watch this. Have no fear. Because the same fire, the same heat that brought the snake out also was the same fire that burned it up. The grace that attracts the snakes is also the grace that will give you the strength to destroy it. Listen, saints of God, you are going to make it. Paul had been through some things. He'd been through some things just even on this journey. And now he is faced with a snake bite, but he's got a word from the Lord over him. The blood of Jesus speaks a better word. God has a better plan for Paul. He was going to make it. You are going to make it. So instead of being afraid of being attacked by the snake, we should be praying that we live in such a way that guess what? I'm going to go out on a limb on this. We pray that we live in such a way where they are attracted. Did she say what? Yes, they are attracted. But guess what? But they are also destroyed by the fire of God in our lives. I want to talk about two types of snakes. And the first one is the snake of opportunity. It is the opportunistic state snake. And those are the snakes. They're looking for a good opportunity to attack you. Satan is the, the author of opportunist opportunity, okay? He is the chief opportunistic snake. And he goes about, the scripture says, like a roaring lion. And what is he doing? He is seeking opportunity for you. Luke 4 and 13 talks about when the devil have finished every temptation. We're talking about with Jesus. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from Jesus until an opportune time. The Bible says that Satan was looking for an opportune time, but he never found one for Jesus. But listen, saints of God, for us, if we be real and if we be honest, there are times and there are places where we are open to an attack. Anybody ever been attacked? Anybody ever been open to an attack? Listen, you ain't got to raise your hand up. I'll just raise my hand for you. But some snakes bite and some snakes squeeze. And the snakes that squeezes kills its victim by squeezing the life out of them. And these types of snakes they don't move very fast. So they look for opportunities for slow moving prey. I wanna ask you a question today. Are you slow moving prey? Are you, are you the prey that looks on the internet at things you don't have no business looking at on the internet? 
Are you watching TV programs that you really shouldn't be looking at? Have you become a captive audience of things that do, that should not have your attention? Those are slow moving, making a small, a slow moving prey. And snakes love a slow, a slow moving prey. Because they want to squeeze the life out of you. Snakes, spiritual snakes, are looking for an opportunity to attach themselves to you. And they will use the image. They will use the thought. They will use a word. They will use a person any, by any means necessary. They're going to take advantage of you. So you have to flee the places of evil opportunities. You have to shake them off into the fire. People love to say, well, the, the Bible, the Bible doesn't say that I, I can't do this or I can't do that. It doesn't say I can't watch this and I can't watch that. But saints, when you have the Holy Spirit, see, this is why you need the Holy Spirit. This is why you need the Holy Ghost. This is why you need him on the inside of you. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, he's going to unction you. He's going to say, oh, no. He's going to unction you about the behavior that is becoming of a saint. He's going to show you how to shake it off into the fire. So the snakes of opportunity can't latch onto you and squeeze the life of you. Tell, just, just look in that mirror again and tell yourself, shake it off. The second kind of snake is a snake that is on assignment. Anybody ever had a snake on assignment? It's been given a specific target to attack. It it's it it plans an attack at a specific time. This snake thinks it knows your weaknesses and your vulnerabilities, and 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 it might, but it forgot about the God that you serve, the God who sits high and looks low. And I, as I thought about this, I thought about all the ites. All the ites that Israel had to deal with in the Old Testament. In the Bible, the Israelites encountered these groups we call the ites. And they were often their adversaries who were trying to prevent them from possessing the promises of God. Anybody, anybody have any of these kind of snakes in their lives who you know that they are on assignment trying to keep you from possessing the plans of God? Who are the ites? I want you to go and study that in your in your time. The Amorites and the Canaanites. See, the Canaanites were the ones who were inhabiting the land of Canaan, which were, were which was the promised land. Okay. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the the Perizzites, the Girgashites is one of the nations that the Israelites were instructed to get rid of from the promised land. The Hivites, um, uh, 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 um, the the um. The people who lived in 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 Gibeon, I think I, that's how you say it, and they deceived Joshua into making a treaty, a peace treaty with them. Anybody ever been deceived? The Amalekites, the Moabites, they were the Moabites were the descendants of Lot, and they often came into conflict with the Israelites, the Edomites, and even even though this one isn't an ite, we all know these the Philistines. They're one of the most famous adversaries of the Israelites. They are known for their clashes with Israel, with the Israelites. The Midianites, come on somebody, the ites. Sometimes your enemies aren't looking for an opportunity. They're, they're planning an attack. They aren't randomly looking for someone, but they have I had a painted a target on your back and they 
purposely went after you. And this type of snake is not the one simply looking for opportunity. This is a snake that is intentionally working to make an opportunity happen. It's coming after you. It's a devil with an assignment. We get assignments from God and they get assignments from hell. Come on, somebody. Always remember that when you are on fire for the Lord and when you are doing it, there's a target on your back. And there's going to be seasons and there's going to be times in your life where a demonic squad is going to come after you. Come on, we got to be real with this thing. Our Christian walk is not on a bed of roses all the time. You start experiencing unusual seasons of temptation. You start experiencing unusual seasons of discouragement. You start experiencing unusual seasons of, of financial hardship. It's an unusual physical attack on your body. It's unusual attack in your relationships. It's a spiritual snake. Be aware of these things. Be aware that this may happen, that this does happen. So you can deal with the snake. And, and, and how do I deal with the snake? I shake it off into the fire. I deal with it through prayer. I deal with it through fasting. This is why you need the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to, the song says, shake, 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 shake the devil off. Listen, I was meditating on this word and I was sitting on my bed and all of a sudden the Lord unctions me to begin to shake my hands and they just begin to shake and shake. And I, 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 I started the shaking, but the Lord was shaking my hands, shake the devil off. Somebody needs to stand in agreement with me right now. And they just need to come into an act of agreement right where you are. And you just need to shake your hands. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake the devil off. You're going to need to pray. You're going to need to pray in the spirit. You're going to need to fast. You're going to need to worship. You're going to need some extra study time in the Bible. You're going to need to surrender yourself to God. You're going to need to surround yourself with the people of God. You're going to need to pull out all stops because you're under an unusual attack. Shake the devil off. Many of, of God's people, especially of the, the people of the five-fold ministry, leaders get so many attacks. This is why, church, you've got to pray for the teachers. You've got to pray for the preachers. You've got to uh, pray for the pastors. You've got to pray for the prophets. You've got to pray for the apostles because they suffer, because they have a target on their back. And they've got boa constrictors. They're trying to come after them. And they want to move and, 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 and give them the slow squeeze, slowly squeeze the life out of them. They got these ites, these snakes on assignment who have analyzed them and planned their attack. And if they don't heed the warnings, if we don't heed warnings, whether you are a pastor or not, like pastor said to me, if I didn't heed the warning, don't go back to the church. Who knows what happened? Who knows what kind of attack I would have faced? They were, it's a setup. I may have had, I may have had the experience what she called needless pain. I'm wrapping it up. But I had a praying mama. I had a praying pastor. I had a praying grandmother. I had a praying mother. I got a praying sister. I got a praying husband. I got a praying church. And the devil didn't understand because I've been there that I had an anchor, that I had an anchor and that anchor gripped 
the solid rock. And that rock is Jesus. Anybody got any ice, any snakes on assignments? Trying to keep you from your place of purpose? I want you to understand this. Don't have any fear. Shake the devil off. See, the devil bit Paul. He, he didn't just bite Paul like in the arm or in the leg. He bit him in the hand and there's a significance in that. The hand represents a couple things in scripture, but the ones I want to point out is that the hand represents service. And um, especially the services that relates to the kingdom of God. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10 talks about whatever, whatever your hands find to do, do it, uh, 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 do it with all your, your, your might. Colossians talks about whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not to men, knowing that the Lord uh, will, will receive the reward uh, that you will receive. Let me back up. Knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ, the apostle Paul in this text, he was working. He was working on building a fire. I want to know, are you playing an instrument for God? Are you singing for God? Can you pray in the spirit? Are you, are, 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 do you have a spiritual gift in your life? Listen, Satan has a great dislike for fire builders because they threaten his kingdom the snakes, the ites, and they have a habit of showing up when the kingdom work is being performed. Their goal is always the same. Their goal is to shut it down. But the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. Since the devil can't take them away, his goal is to discourage you from using them. His goal is to have you to fall into a state of inactivity. Ask me how I know. I want to ask you another question, saints. Have people, have circumstances, have situations shut down your service to the kingdom? Did you let hardship, did you let fatigue, did you let discouragement stop you from doing the things that you were doing in service to the Lord? Don't worry. I come with a message that you can make it. This is your clarion call, as they say, to shake the devil off, make a decision. I'm gonna stay in the service of God. I'm gonna stay in the place where God can use my gifts that he has given me for his purpose. I'm gonna shake, 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 shake the devil off. And lastly, the hand also represents your standing with God. Matthew 25 talks about then the king shall say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. God's right hand is the place of his favor. It's the place of his blessing. So when the devil attacks, his attacks will always come around to lying about your standing before God, your standing with God. When the devil attacks, he does it in so many different ways. This is why you need the Holy Ghost. You'll have have an attack on your service. You'll have an attack on your assets. You'll have an attack. He will uh, 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 do all those things. And at the same time, he'll be whispering in your ear. He'll be whispering condemnation. He'll be whispering shame. He'll be whispering discouragement. He, uh, he'll be whispering all of everything that hell has to offer into your ear. <laughs> he'll be saying, see, God is not for you. If he was for you, this wouldn't be happening. Too many people gave up on the service of God. They give up because of discouraging words whispered in their ears. When you face some things like Paul did, you, you get judged and you get criticized. We have to recognize that it's an attack being opened up against you by hell. We have to shake it off into the fire. The blood of Jesus is speaking a better word. And the word of God says, listen, 
here's where Jesus is. Ephesians, y'all know I'm in Ephesians from my book. Ephesians 1 and 18 says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of his glory of his inheritance in this state and what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe these are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and he seated him on the right hand in the heavenly places far above all the rule and the power and, 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 and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. God exalted Jesus and seated him in the highest place. And he seated him into the highest place of honor, right next to himself. Now watch where God placed us. Ephesians chapter two tells us that, but God being rich in his mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, he made us alive with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In order that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Church, we can make it. <laughs> Excuse me. We can make it. We've been seated together with Christ. We've been placed in the highest place of honor because of the blood of Jesus. The devil will always try to attack your standing before God because he knows that if you ever fig figure out who you are in Christ, you'll be the kind of person who can not only shake him off, but you can shake his kingdom. Saints, don't judge the word by your circumstances, but judge your circumstances by the word. Listen, I, how, how do I fight? I've been seated in, in the highest place of honor in the kingdom. I am loved. I am favored. In the ages to come, God is going to show the surpassing uh, riches of his grace towards me. I am at, at his right hand where his pleasures will be forevermore. I can make it. How did Paul deal with that attack? He shook it off, but he shook it off quickly. Paul didn't give the viper any opportunity to wrap itself around his arm. Some of us have let things attach themselves far too long. The word says today is that you can make it. You have to shake it off. You have to shake it off, saints. You have to shake off depression. You've got to shake off unforgiveness. You've got to shake off offense. You've got to shake off, uh, uh, off the, the snake, the eye of criticism. You've got to shake off co condemnation. You've got to shake off shame. You've got to shake off doubt. You've got to shake off discouragement. You've got to shake it off. You've got to shake off unholy attachments. You've got to shake it off. You've got to shake off fear. You've got to shake off bitterness. You've got to shake the ites out of the tree. You know, shake snakes be in trees. You got to shake the ice out of the trees and into the fire. Shake it off. Paul shook it off into the fire. He killed it. He didn't give it a chance to come back a second time. He shook it off in the fire. Shake it off in the fire of prayer. Shake it off in the fire of the word. Shake it off in the presence of God. Shake it off in the fire of grace. Shake it off in the fire of a counterattack. Say it, say it, that says, says, devil, I don't agree with you. I'm seated together with Christ in the right hand of God. I shake off the beast into the fire. No power of hell has the plate has place around me. In the name of Jesus, I shake you off. Build saints and keep building. Yes, the ites are going to come. I, 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 the ites are going to come. Snakes are going to come. They're going to come. They're going to they're going to feel the heat. Rest assured, they're going to come. But you have been endued, endowed, 
with power from on high. And you have the fire, the Holy Ghost, and you can shake it off and you can make it. Church on that island, Paul healed the sick. He healed the sick. And you know he preached the Lord Jesus Christ. He had purpose and so do you. Did he make it to Rome? I know somebody's wondering, did he make it to Rome? Yeah, he made it to Rome, saints. Just as the angel said he would. And Paul in Rome, he was allowed to live by himself with the guard. He, he talked to many people. Guess what he talked to them about? About the Lord Jesus. He talked to them about God's kingdom. And even though he was just kind of like a prisoner, he was able to help and to teach others to learn about Jesus. Church, my assignment today was to, to, to encourage you in this journey. Listen, Paul made it. Church, I made it. Anybody else have a testimony that you made it? I want I want you to type it in the chat. I made it. Write it in the chat. Testify. I made it. See, because if you can make it, somebody else who think they can't make it, they'd be like, oh, if they can make it. Listen, if Sister Tisha can make it, you can make it. I don't have any doubt. You can make it. I don't care what you're going through. You can shake the devil off and you can make it. I want to play something for you. I want to play something for you because this song has been ministering to me and I want to play it for you. This song is going to help you to shake the devil off. You can make it, church. You can make it. Let's see here. Now, if I could just figure this out, share my screen, share my sound. <clears throat> you can make it, saints. Come on you can and make say it. it. You can make it. This trial you're going through. to show you. say it, you can make it. This trial you're going through. God's going to show you. I want you to know, saints, you're not in this thing alone. <clears throat> you're not in this thing alone. You can make it. God is in it with you. I want you, I want to do something that I believe the Lord is instructing me to do. I want you to type in the chat any ites you've been facing, any storms that have been blowing in 
your life. Let me stop the screen share. If you got a storm that has been blowing in your life. You don't have to, you can just type one word. You can type health. You can type finances. You can type, you can type it in the chat. I want you to type it in the chat. What, what, what storm do you have? Listen, God sent me with the word to encourage you because you got a storm in your life. You got a night in your life. You got a snake in your life. And he's saying you can make it. So I want you to just put it in the chat. One word, one word, one word, one word, one word. I'm going to I'm going to drop mine in the chat. I'm going to drop mine in the chat. Thank you, sis. Drop it in the chat, saints. Drop it in the chat. What are your storms? You got them, you got them, you got them, you got them. Is it salvation you need today? I just need one, one word that encapsulates the storm that you are working with. We got some health in the chat. We've got some finances in the, in the chat. I'm gonna put mine in the chat we got family in the chat we've got finances in the chat we've got health in the chat we got jobs in the chat come on somebody we have businesses in the chat i'm gonna do something that i believe the lord is instructing me to do and i'm gonna call on prophet elijah can i can i can I, can I call on the prophet this morning? Prophet, are you with me? Are you with me this morning? I am. I am, praise the Lord. Prophet, you see these names here that are coming. Can you see the chat, prophet? Yes, I can. You see these names and you see that you see what they're putting in the chat? They got ites and they've got snakes. And, 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 and uh, oh, I thought I stopped that. Sorry, I thought I stopped that. I thought I stopped that. I told y'all I can't hear when the thing is attached and I detached the mic. But I believe that the Lord is instructing me to instruct, to, to, to ask the prophet to pray. And if the Lord gives you a word for anybody, go ahead and release it, prophet. I'm, I'm pulling on the gift today, prophet. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, with all the things that have been typed in the chat and the things that haven't been typed in the chat. We thank you for revitalizing relationships and all the help in the job, Lord God, revitalize, renew, and refresh all the things that are in this chat right now. Financial, health, you know, the jobs, Lord God, just be in the midst of every it, everything that has been typed in, and again, everything that hasn't and typed in, Lord God, you know what each person, each family, each household needs, Lord God. We thank you for your ever abiding presence, Lord God, right now, that not only will you answer, but you will be swift in the way that you answer, Lord God. Whatever it is, Lord God, astonish us, Lord God, and all the things that are before us right now, Lord God, individually, collectively, God, as a church, Lord God, that every household represented here this morning and others that, that may need a touch or a word from you, Lord God, that you would give the touch, you would be the word, Lord God. It gives us the understanding that in you 
All things are possible. With you, all things are possible. There is no snake that has power, more power than you, Lord God. And like, like Evangelist said, we have to shake it off. Whatever those things are, Lord God, let us shake it off this morning and allow your presence to be the portal for praise, Lord God. Because if we praise you now, if we praise you as we're going through or as we're experiencing things that are testy, that are something that takes our focus off of you, Lord God, whatever the challenge is, Lord God, I'm asking you right now in the powerful name of Jesus to cancel any assignment, to cancel any dart that's being thrown at the challenge the people of God this morning, Lord God, in their health, in their wealth, in their relationships, all the things that are in here, Lord God. We praise you for it now, because if I rejoice in it now, then you will give me the joy to understand that it is in your will and through the praise that we are able to go through, to get through. There's nothing that can stop us from what God has ordained in us. Lord God, I thank you for it this morning, Lord God. I thank you for the word this morning, Lord God. I thank you for Sister Teacher bringing the word this morning to let us know that we could just got, if there's something we're holding on to or something that has attached itself to us, that we have the power to shake it off. Shake it off. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God, because there's nothing, nothing can stop what God has in store for his people what he has stored up for his people. Let us tap in, Lord God, and get into your will and your frequency and, and the, the energy of who you are in us. And let us, let us give off that heat. Let us get off, give off that fire, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And I'm asking you to touch every corner of the households I'm represented here in faith, Lord God. We call it done. Hallelujah. We trust you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. you, brother. Yes, no problem. Thank you, thank Jesus. You. He's an awesome God. Yes. He's amazing and he is able. Hallelujah. And like you said, I need I need to say this. We are not alone. We are not alone. The second thing that comes to mind is we win. Hallelujah. We win. Because God gives us everything we need to win. Yes. Sometimes we can we can miss the fact that we have an, an expected end. Hallelujah. And God knows every step. So our trials are, are, are a testing ground to our faith and how we will stand in the midst of this the, uh, an attack <laughs> and, and in the midst of, of finances being touched, in the midst of health being a challenge, in the, in the midst of it seeming like the where did the wealth go? Why am I being tested so much into what, what I, I already had established? Why? Because God, it will use anything to get us to look up or look into him. Look in. If he lives in us, look in and shake off the things that are that diminish the power that you feel you have. How can you let anything, circumstance, anything overwhelm you to the point that where you don't understand the God that lives in me doesn't it didn't walk away from me? He didn't leave me. I didn't he, I didn't forsake him. I'm trusting him. I'm holding on to him. Because I have to believe that in doing that, he will answer. We are not alone. We win. We win. Sometimes things come up. and you not, I, I mean, the thing about it is when they come up, how do we respond? Are we being proactive or are we being reactive in the moment when the challenge faces us? When things come to get us off off kilter, off off balance, we have to maintain our our spiritual integrity so that we can give off the spiritual heat. So we can burn the dresses, burn burn the, the everything away from where we are and where we find ourselves sometimes. 
he is not he is not gone <laughs> he is yet alive living in us our mortal bodies pastor used to say about a thousand times we've heard it he now dwells in us so if i go deep how how deep will God go? If I really use my power and speak it from these lips of clay, as they say, then what, what can I not manifest? What will he not allow to manifest? Yes, it may take a little bit of time. It may be a little bit longer. But guess what? <laughs> Joshua fit the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. So what are we, what is she say? This is one thing that, that comes to mind, ego. Ego. And we have to let go of ego. We have to get out of the way and be in the will of God, erecting great obstacles. Sometimes we can build the things that, that end up being the, the instead of us being the, the, the gatekeepers or the, the ones that watch the, the temple, the ones that corral the saints to get them into a place, a position of power, erecting great obstacles is a trap of the enemy. There is a major snake. And it's not saying anybody's puffed up in themselves, but we have to remember that if we allow ourselves to run, run this race with the grace of God, then guess what? There is no obstacle that he will not answer. Hallelujah. There is no snake that can attack us and, and, and take us out. What if that was like one of those black snakes or something that out there that are super venomous? Like you have maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops. Once the, could you imagine that? What if that, because I forget, they, I think they have copperheads out there too. What if that was a baby copperhead that sometimes the babies have more energy Hmm. that will be a detriment, more of a detriment than a grown snake. Hallelujah. So we have to be careful where we step. What are we stepping into that God doesn't want us to experience? They say experience teaches wisdom, so we have to apply it. We've said that before. Apply the wisdom of God and walk in your nature. Amen. I think Amen. that's the word. I mean, that's the word, right? Walk in your nature of God. If God is the essence of our presence and his presence is the character that we're supposed to abide by, then what, how can we not tread over the serpent? <laughs> and I know somebody, a lot of, some of us swim, some of us don't, but that's running in place and moving your arms back and forth to stay elevated above the water. God's not going to let us sink. This ain't no sinking ship. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. You. I praise the Lord for you asking because I, you know, I was listening to the word and I was like, oh my goodness, if I could just stay ignited and keep the heat, the fire, will burn away just about anything and make you pure as gold. Hallelujah. See, mm -hmm. that's what we got to understand. We're working towards a crown. Come on. Everything we're going through right now, some of us are, too, I, I mean, I'm not exempt either. Well, the things we go through are just for God to see. Is, is, how is he going to respond to this? <laughs> how yeah. is she going to respond to this? It may be one of the most unforeseen things you could ever imagine in life. But guess what? If you if we become proactive in our well-doing, then we won't react and reduce the power that is there for us to work for us. So be proactive instead of reactive. And whatever we all individually, collectively need to shake off, let's just begin to shake it off, like she said. Just shake it off. Let it go. It has no place anymore. And as we find ourselves in transition, shake, shake up, shake up your praise and, and lift up the church for each other. Let's, let's lift up the church for each other. That's why it's here. That's why we are here. That's why we're gathered today. Shake it up, shake it up and shake it off. Don't just shake it. Shake it up and shake it off. Give it up. Give it to God. Come on. 
I'm out the way, but I definitely could keep going because it's just chewing right now. It's a really good flavor the way you season that because sometimes the practical things mean the most. That's why they say the little things mom used to tell me, the little things will add up, Bo. Don't get frustrated. Yeah. You're going to have to let that frustration go. Yeah. So that, why? So I can give God space to really work for me. Hallelujah. So you can give God space to work for you. So I praise the Lord for you this morning, evangelist. I love your ministry, the delivery, and the way. <laughs> Water on ducks back. See, after this, let me say something. Not that I want to change up the sayings or anything, but after a while, you have to grow from a duck to a swan. <laughs> Let's change that to <laughs> water it on swan's back. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't talking about no Canadian geese. I'm talking about a real sw <laughs> like swan feathers because we're all growing into a greater acknowledgement of God in our lives. So that means we have to grow into something greater than a duck. <laughs> <laughs> but she did used to say it all the time. Why yeah. don't ducks back, baby? Don't ducks back, baby. Just let it roll off. <laughs> I love it. You know, but I'm just saying, and not to take away, but to add. You understand? We have to begin to add yeah. and release the sorrows to the Lord. Because yes. he knows that he's really not that far far away. He's omnipresent, right? That means he's everywhere. So if he lives in you, guess where God is? <laughs> in you. <laughs> Shake it off. Man, I'm excited this morning. I needed that. And yes, we do win, Sister Pam. Ain't nothing the devil can throw of us that God don't have an answer for. Amen. I love you today, Greater Light. I love you, Sister Tisha. God bless you. Love Excuse me, Tisha Costa. Amen. Thank God you. God praise today. Uh, I, this word was very good, very timely. And uh, I pray that it reaches the purpose in which God gave it to you. Amen. Amen. So I back to you of all that you gave out this morning and that yes, God will. God to add to you more power more of yes, his power, and more of his praise on your lips hallelujah there's anointing that you have been experiencing lately that is not like any other time in your life so i tell you because i can see it i can feel it i can hear it okay don't don't not go to it i know that sounded funny the way that came out but that that goes for everyone I'm speaking to evangelists right now, but that goes for everyone. There is a power through what we're going through in the process that God has us in. Just stay close to God, stay close to the fire, and let him do his work. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless, God bless you. you. Just stay in it. You understand Amen. what I'm saying? Just mm -hmm. stay in it. In everything that you are thinking about. Amen. Amen. You remember how we used to rub our hands together before we would pray? And you begin to feel that heat in your hands. Hallelujah. See, that's the yes. kindling spirit. That's that's where you gather your energy. And before you go to touch something, just begin to rub your hands together and feel the heat of your anointing. <clears throat> Somebody said, what you talking about, uh, Prophet? I'm talking about a prophetic anointing that walks in all of us because of what was, what, what has been planted in us has to come out. So begin to rub your hands together before you begin to pray or while you're praying. And before you touch whatever or you speak, just when you open your hands, I wish my camera was on, but just as you rub your hands and you, you, you open your hands and you lift your arms to God and you draw the presence of God to a forefront focus. Remember, Bishop used to say, "Get the if you can't see the person or touch the person." These are his words. If you can't see or touch the person, get their get their face in your spiritual eye, and draw them in. Use your anointing and pray. But I feel to tell us this morning. Just begin to when you get into something and you feel like just. 
you know what, just say, you know, I'm just going to rub my hand, you know. Sometimes people rub their forehead or they, they grab their sides of their head by the temple, but just begin to rub your hands in, together and just watch the heat rise up and then touch, even if the person is not in front of you. <laughs> I feel to say, focus on these things and watch God work. And then we got to do more than watch and pray. We have to speak the word a new word with the fresh anointing and watch God work for us. Amen. Man, I, I, I promise you I could keep going. I just such a flow in the spirit right now, you know, yes. and for those of you who don't know, a lot of times I don't like to pray out loud because I want to focus in on what God is saying when I pray. So I thank you for, for asking me to pray because the more practice, the better the praise gets, right? <laughs> Not a, a, a not a greater anointing, but a greater understanding that you have the words to speak, even for me. So let it be a witness to you this morning. Use the words, pray the prayers, and focus your energy, and watch God work, because He gives it. It's up up to us how we use it. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. I'm stepping down off of this soapbox this morning, but hallelujah for the word in this 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 uh the service this morning. Amen. God bless you, greater light. Anticipate you. things this week. So next week we can come with some testimonies and look at what God did. And all I did was focus a little bit, but be in anticipation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That thing you want to just uh it, it it's you should have an answer by Wednesday afternoon, huh? I think you're looking. Again? I said the thing that you're working on, you're looking for an answer on about something, mm -hmm. and I you'll have it by Wednesday. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I receive that. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, receive God it. God bless you. I Thank don't know you. what, but I feel like something something is is, is in the works. And yes, God. have a full, clear pathway by Wednesday. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. God is something else. Yeah. You can make it. You can make you it. You can make it. You've already overcome. You can make it. I'm turning it over myself, Prophet. I'm turning it back to the hands of Pastor uh, Harris. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you today, great God light. bless you. God bless you both. Such a powerful word, evangelist. We thank you for breaking the bread of life, feeding the sheep of God, that we know without a shadow of a doubt that we can make it. You know, it, it, it just ties in to the Sunday school message of Naomi and the tragedies she faced. But through her faith, she was able to make it through and see the blessings of God move in her life. So I pray that everybody received the word this morning uh, that was given to us and that no matter what we are going through or facing we keep our focus on jesus for the word declares that he would never leave us nor forsake us he would be with us always so i thank god for the word today i thank god for using evangelists thank god for using our pastor to pray over each and every one of us and that we will take the time to meditate upon this word, take the time to go back and revisit this word, listen to it again, be encouraged that no matter what it is, God is going to work it out. We got to be like Paul. We got to shake it off and keep on moving in the name of Jesus. So I thank God for all that he has done on today 
uh, just want to remind everybody of our upcoming service times, uh, Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, also, as a reminder, it was mentioned during our announcements that Sister Brooks son's home going service will be on Wednesday, uh, 10 a.m. viewing, 11 a.m. will be the service time. All those that can come out and be of support to our sister during this grievous time, be there to support her if you can. And then just a reminder that we will be having our Friday morning prayer, 5 a.m. I believe this is the second week uh, men's fellowship Friday night. Not sure about the women, but uh, second week, you can talk to the ones that are over that. Sister Felicia, Sister Cherie, uh, Sister Patsy, and they'll let you know what's going on. Uh, Deacon Stevenson, uh, let's see, you've got your hand up, so let me just unmute you. You can go ahead. Go ahead, Deacon. Oh, hey, man, I'm sorry about that. But I wanted to say uh, um, what a what a wholesome, what a blessed time. Um, yes, uh, we'll have men fellowship this Friday. It'll be uh, all that God will have it to be. But I wanted to thank the preacher for the preaching of the 